today I'm gonna give you first ever house tour. Okay, we're gonna go through how I did this, how I managed to achieve this um, construction on a budget, believe it or not, on a budget. And I'm gonna share with you one thing, one thing that I would have done differently um, when I carried out the design and the construction of this amazing building. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. First of all, Trump. Jay, what inspired you to build a passive house? And how did you first learn mm. about the concept? Absolutely. Okay, what inspired, me, what, what inspired me to do a passive house is this, look. My ultimate chief goal in life, mm -hmm. okay, is leaving this planet better than I encounter it. Okay. And we know all um, human beings have completely destroyed the planet. That's the reality, okay? Yep. Or most, most of us, yeah, okay? Yeah. Yep. Uh, without considering the environment. Yeah. So I always had, in my heart, I always had this tree hugger okay. um, mindset, where, where, let's say. Where does that stem back from? When, when, when... I started, I started earlier on. As a kid, yeah. as a kid, uh, I always, uh, you know, I always look at the, you know, the, the living with, 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 with environment, with our ecosystem, with our harmony. I always mm -hmm. had that sustainability mindset. Yeah. Um, when I started my MSc at Surrey University, uh, after being an engineer, getting a degree in civil engineering, mm -hmm. um, I saw, right, I, an amazing opportunity on how to use recycled concrete, how to oh. use recycled aggregates in concrete. So okay. I did my dissertation right. on how to actually use recycled aggregates to build yeah. houses, um, how to, re you know, to that yeah. I had that fascination for reusing materials. Yeah. So uh, ever since arriving this tropical island, as I call it, yeah, because uh, I'm from Colombia. Yeah, yeah. Um, Colombia, there, just on the left-hand side. <laughs> that's, nice. that is, so, uh, yeah. that, that is uh, <laughs> uh, Tyrona Park. Um, incidentally, amazing place. You put it in your bucket list. Um, I had this fascination to, yeah. you know, um, to, you know, leave a um, uh, or leave a legacy, um, you know, uh, for our yeah. kids for a. Uh, for a, a uh, for everyone else, yeah. just to help with that, you know, to live live, live and, and look after this planet. So the the term passive house, it's it's not a, a term that you you've kind of just grown into it. Yeah. You didn't you didn't read it online one day and went right. That's what I want to yeah. do. It's kind of you you found what you wanted to do and then realised that actually it is called the passive house kind yeah, of yeah. afterwards. Sure. Okay. So so okay. What, what happened was this. Look, th this is the thing. I strongly believe that once you put a vision out there, the universe helps you to uh, make it real, okay? Mm -hmm. So I always had in my head to build an eco home, mm -hmm. okay? But it, as it transpires, I, did, I do a uh, training, or one of my businesses is training, property training, and I help other people with their journeys, yeah. their property journeys. And one of my students, an architect, came, came to one of our boot camps and he basically introduced me to the concept of passive house. Okay. He says, I mentioned that I was building a house and he said, why don't we just go passive? Do that. I didn't have a clue about this. Yeah. And he basically helped me with the construction drawings, with yeah. everything, to get it to that standard. So um, on, on that, kind of leads me on to my, my second question, Jay, to yourself, is can you describe kind of the key features and design principles yeah. of, of your house that, that do make it that do make it a, 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 a passive house. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, passive is is one of those um, you know fancy words that, yeah. in a nutshell, is eco friendly. Okay. What it what it means is basically, this house as it was built, um, has a very low U value. A U value is called thermal transmittance value. Yeah. Okay. In right. other words, once you're in the house, the yeah. the thermal losses are minimal or right. very close to zero. Okay. So the closer to zero that you value, the better. Right. So this house has got 0 0.14 U value. Right. Okay. So once you're in, keeps the heat in. Yep. Right. What happens is without, uh, you know, in the old constructions, we just didn't didn't think into that into consideration. Yeah. So as soon as you're in, you lose heat through the windows, you lose yeah, yeah. heat through the through the shell. Yeah. Whereas this house is living in an airplane. Okay. So can I ask a silly question? Fine. Why? So if, if we if we shut all the doors. Yeah and I lived in here, we, we didn't leave for two years, yeah. why wouldn't we die? Would, why wouldn't we run out of oxygen? Absolutely, good question. So one of the key elements of having a passive house is you need to have a uh, system called MVHR system, mm -hmm. which is Mechanical Heat Recovery Ventilation System. Right. It's a little thing that lives in the, our utility room right. that sucks 
air from the outside, yep. filters it, okay. okay, and distributes the air around the house. Yeah. And one of the things that I even, cons even considered uh, when I was uh, doing this was this. Like, I used to suffer a lot from hay fever right. because yeah. of the pollen. Yeah. It gives me, you know, um, gives me this Sniffles, itchiness and yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Yep. But because it's got a system filter air, yeah. at a filter in there in that MVHR system, I, I don't suffer from that anymore. So that brings in fresh, fresh air, air. Kind of constantly? Constantly. What happens is this, look, look, bring fresh air constantly. Then if you're, let's say, cooking in the kitchen, right? Yeah. And then you're producing all this whole air, there is, there is some um, um, vents that suck that whole air, yep. goes back to the MVHR system, mix it with the fresh it air, and distribute, it, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. distribute it around the house because it's got pipes everywhere. Yep. At a, at a set temperature. So, so. And in the winter, it saves you a lot of money for bills, obviously. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. So in, in terms of when you were building it, what challenges did you face? Because mm. I know that there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a large amount of misunderstanding about passive houses and, and also it's not, the, the tech, technology is not mm. readily available. It's becoming more available, yeah, yeah, yeah. but certainly over the last kind of 10 years, it's stepped up a bit. So. Were there some hurdles that you had to get yeah. through? What was the biggest kind of issues? Was it finding builders that actually had any idea of what was going on? Or go on, talk, yeah, talk to me. Yeah, it is. It's it. yeah. it, it a long list. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, when I purchased the plot, uh, I couldn't do much with it. Sadly, um, you know the foundations were not up to standard. I had to demolish the whole thing. Was it a um, 30s bungalow? It was an like old, that? you know, old uh, 50s bungalow. 50s? Okay. Uh, it poorly extended, um, so I had no choice but to get, you know, yeah, demolish yeah. it all and start all over again. What yeah. I have to do then was to get some tenants on a sort of a win-win, as in really low rent, yeah. for them to live in here, because it was livable, okay. okay, while I was waiting for planning, uh, and while I was waiting for quotes and so all. So you did, didn't live in it yourself? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I was elsewhere. Um, so I had to do that. Um, yeah. And obviously avoid the squatters that, you know, it's difficult to get rid of them and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, okay, I did that for the time being to just, you know, to put, you know, to um, get rid of that risk. But then after COVID, guess what? Construction costs were yeah, yeah. high up. Yeah. You know, everything went high up. Labor, you know, Brexit didn't help either. Mm. So I was like scratching my head. How the hell am I going to do? So you know what, as we discussed earlier, yeah. there's always, when there's risk, there's always opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So in my head was like, I want to write a book on this, okay? okay. I want to inspire other people on how to build a passive house okay. on a budget. Yeah, so yeah. I'm in the middle of doing that as okay. we speak. Watch out for that then, guys. So yeah. I was, I went and basically packaged every single element. Yep. And I, and, I, and I basically went through an exercise of how can I reduce cost in here? Mm -hmm. So for the groundworks, yep. rather than using reinforced concrete, I used posters concrete, right. right? Reduce the amount of steel, like 40 tons, mm -hmm. and reduce the amount of concrete. Yep. So I went to, from a 385 uh, centimeters, uh, reinforced concrete slab down to 125 right, because so I used tendons instead. So good, good savings yeah. on, on that. For the shell, say similarly in a in a in a traditional construction block work construction it would have been in the region of 385 grand just wow. a shell okay yeah, yeah so i went to see panels option like yeah. a sort of uh, sort of a modular construction yeah but i reduced that to 178 yeah. uh, so a lot of things that i used yeah, yeah. you know for my experience for experience, experience as a developer yeah um, so it's kind of all, use all, that. all external factors were your were your biggest biggest kind of yeah. ones on that. In terms of materials uh, and te technologies, how did you select which materials and kind of technologies to sure. use, like the heat recovery system? Mm. Is, is that, um, did you look at lots of different firms that were building it or kind of, is, is, is there lots of firms sure. building these, these kind of things? 100%. Or, or not? So for every element, obviously you can go and shop around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's more, more, more than one provider of the system, the yeah. MVHR system, there are different companies, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so what I did was have uh, construction drawings ready mm -hmm. and get quotes from X, Y, and Z. Yep. And obviously lead time is important. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure that they were, yeah. you know, they were on time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you always do that in the you know in our business we always do tender, get quotes, negotiate as much as yeah. you can down to get to to where you to where you be. are. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's lead the guys round so they sure. can have a, a little bit bit of a, a bit of a, 
a further look, we'll go over into the, the kitchen unit. We've kind of touched on the ventilation system yep. uh, a little bit, so I don't think we need to, to go down that route, which is one of my next questions. Um, so I, I, big question here is a, a lot of our kind of clients um, ask questions about actually living yeah. in one. So how has living mm. in Passive House um, affected your daily life and also Amazing. the overall comfort compared to yeah. a conventional house? 100%. That's a really good question. Um, living, okay, is one of those things that I have to piss myself to tell you why. Because yeah. when I had a vision of building a house, mm -hmm. okay, it was clear to me, but when now they're waking up, so for some reason, I feel that that vision um, is nowhere near and it's better. Oh, okay. Yeah? Oh, that's good. So, so it's great. So I'll take you upstairs to my, to my bedroom. She's got an amazing view. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> um, um, so I've got an amazing view. So for instance, previously dark days like this, like yeah. today, were, were no nice to me. Yeah. But now that I can see it from the top, the fog looks real different yeah. and, and I love it. So, yeah. you know, it, my mental state, my, you know, yeah. it has tremendously impacted positively. Yeah. Also, the fact that I don't have to worry about hay fever anymore because yeah. all the air is filtered. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that there's plenty, plenty of oxygen in the house, so I have no headaches. Yeah. Sometimes you wake up with a yeah. headache when you close all the windows, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to save on the, uh, uh, yeah. on the heating bills. There's so also, there's Jay, the, 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 the biggest thing that you're always saying to me is, the, the cost mm. you have there, there's there's what were the financial implications of building it both in terms of obviously initial costs mm. which was potentially higher in, in terms of underfloor heating everything like that yeah, although yeah. you do it probably underfloor heating if we're doing a, a standard house now anyway mm. but now you you love showing me that mm. app that you've got on your yeah. phone and you, and every time we meet you're okay. kind of like look Phil <laughs> I'm getting two pound uh, a day here back to the grid so yeah. I'm literally living in a in a in a free house mm. you, you you run your electric car yeah, yeah. from the power mm. that the house is actually making so yeah, yeah. talk talk to us a little sure. bit about about that as well Joe sure okay so this is the this is the thing the good thing about it mm. thinking sustainably and um, um, also means economic yeah. you know it needs to have an economic economic element out mm. of it right so yes the the house bill costs more Mm -hmm. Typically, I'll say 15 to 20 percent. Okay. Okay, yeah, depending yeah. Yeah. Um, on how good are you negotiation are, yeah, <laughs> well, your negotiation skills, basically. <laughs> um, however, once you start living and running the house, yeah. your bills disappear. Yeah. I mean, in here, my comfort footprint on this house is actually minus 2.2. Why? I've got 26 solar mm -hmm. panels that generate more electricity than I need for the house. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm not using it. Yeah. and my batteries are, are fully charged, I'll sell back to the grid, yeah. okay? Even in a sunny day, I can recharge my car for free with the solars only, mm -hmm. no grid, yeah. uh, so I'm getting paid. So during the summer periods, I get paid. During the winter periods, I don't get paid, yeah. but balance is out. Yeah. So to give you an idea of the system, because I did this for my students, so the cost of the whole, you know, the solar panels, the batteries, the whole, the whole, the whole uh, electricity setup, um, I've got it back in 3.2 years. Okay. Okay, which is basically yeah, yeah, good. great. Yeah, I yeah. recover my money in 3.2 years, then it's basically infinite return. Yeah. So no brainer for me. In terms of lifespan of some of the equipment in there, they kind of got 10 year guarantees, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So yeah, so, so minimum, minimum, you know, min minimum 10 year guarantee. So, you know, you, 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 you know, yeah, if you obviously look after them, maintain yeah. them well, even more. Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 25 years even. Okay. So it's up. not like, um, I know there's, there's, there's been a lot of talk, you know, with the electric cars, batteries only having a lifespan, yeah. but it's not so much of a, yeah. much of a thing here. No, because once the envelope is built, you know, yeah. it, this is, it, because it's so robust, yeah. um, it will withstand, you know, um, uh, 50, 60 years easily, yeah. no, no issues. Super stuff. And what would you advise for someone considering building their own passive house, Jay? Uh, there's a long list, that's why I'm writing a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So read uh, Jay's if, book when's that, when that's out. Absolutely. But kind of a couple of, you know, three or four kind yeah. of nuggets of, of, of advice just to, 100%. just to throw at someone, really. Yeah, so, so look, it, the reason, you know, of um, um, 
building a passive house is obviously it needs to go in line with your values first of all, right? Mm -hmm. You as a person. Um, uh, you need to be passionate about it. Um, you know, it's not an easy journey, but uh, you know, you can, yeah. you, you, anyone could do this, okay? Um, but I said the, the, the piece of advice that I, I would, you know, I'd like to pass on mm. uh, is, look, reality is we need to contribute uh, to the problem rather than being the problem, mm -hmm. right? If we start doing nothing, yeah, yeah. right, to the environment, okay? Yeah. The, the world is not going to change. No. Okay, so we need to concentrate going back to your core values and work on that basis. Yeah. Um, in terms of finance, yes, get a you know get a lump sum of money. You can get development finance for it nowadays. Yeah. You're a green, you know, get the green sort of options that are out there. Banks are lending money for What's green kind alternatives. Of lo 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 lower lower, lower rates, rates because you of know that? because okay. of the, uh, the okay. all the impact um, um, and shop around. Yeah. As in, do strong, strong construction drawings, yeah. tender drawings. Get yeah. help on a QS if you need quality surveyor. Yeah. Um, but if you're familiar with the system, just really strong construction drawings and go to five different options. Yeah, and yeah. always think outside the head. Yeah. Always challenge the status quo. Well, a little bit like you were saying with the flooring. The flooring heating. That, that was yourself that came up with that. It 100%. wasn't, it wasn't uh, the QS that, 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 that came up with it, was it? So, so challenge the status quo yeah. and ask why. Ask questions. Right, look, for, yeah. for, for an instance, my structural engineer gave me a solution. Yeah. Okay. And if I was just taking that, I would have spent a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have to be an engineer to say, why are you doing it? Yeah. What's the reason? Yeah. And come up with alternatives and challenge that status quo mm -hmm. always. Yeah. We save you lots of time and money. Yeah. Okay. Super stuff. Thanks, Jay. Um, one last question. Is there anything that you would have done differently? <laughs> okay. One thing, not... <laughs> Right. Okay. There. There. Look. Uh, as I, as we you go around no. the house, yeah. No. As I go around the house, I think there are little things that I think I would have done differently in this terms of the design. Right. Uh, like the corner seat uh, window that you got over there. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's just a tiny bit there that was not quite there. So perhaps I say, look, um, when I did the design of this house, I did at the time, I did 3D, 3D, 3D drawings yeah. as in renders. Yeah. Okay, that helped me yeah. with uh, picturing better, visualizing, it, visualizing yeah. it. Did you manage? Could you put the VR headset on? But and that didn't. Kind of thing? So didn't? I would have oh. done that. Uh, okay. So yeah. something that I would have done, I would recommend to your listeners is, or to our listeners too, is do that yeah. on every single room. Okay, <laughs> and uh, you know, be you know. Uh, how, how to inform the session. Take, take your time yeah. in the planning stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the yeah. design stage.